Welcome to ABA On Call. Join myself, Rick Cabina. Behavior analysis is a science of behavior. And Doug Kostowitz. Focus on the individual, and you're gonna see focus on behavior. For a thought-provoking conversation. Hey everybody, would you like to get a CEU for this episode? Listen closely for the announcement of three secret words delivered throughout the episode. Take note of those words and we will tell you where to go to get your CEU when the show is over. Hello everyone and welcome back to ABA On Call. Doug, I sound like a broken record, but here we are with another fabulous, fabulous episode coming at coming at you all and today we have a special guest and uh, our special guest is my dear colleague Kirk Kirby of Team ABA and what we're going to focus on today Doug in uh, is talking about uh, what and what TBA Team ABA specializes in is sports in ABA and if you take a look at, uh, and I'll, we'll put this in the show notes for those of you who haven't seen this, the BACB has a, uh, they look at you know, what do people do who are registered in the vast majority of people, uh, like over 70% are working in autism and less than 1% are uh, in the category, uh, and it's not even just sports, it's health, sports, and fitness. So they put all of these together and it's a, just not even 1%. So this is going to be uh, fascinating to talk with Kirk and uh, find out more about ABA and sports. Yes, I'm very excited. So welcome, Kirk. Oh, guys, thank you very much for having me on, uh, Rick and Doug. Uh, um, again, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And uh, special guest, I think that might be a little bit of a term that I might not be able to live up to, but thank you very much. You're welcome. And we're excited to talk sports and ABA and sports and ABA. Notice I like the sports theme going. So, okay. So let's. Boy, hey, just wrong. Guys, I love you to death, but Jesus, can we get some better teams here so, of choice. Uh, for those who aren't <laughs> watching us, Doug has a, well, I can't see. What do you have? On I got, I got a Lemieux here? jersey, so I got a Penguins jersey. Okay, Lemieux jersey. I'm, I'm sporting the Giants because, you know, I'm a huge Saquon Barkley fan, Penn State grad, love that man, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so at any rate, <laughs> there we are. So, okay, <laughs> on, to the, on to the important stuff. So, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. So, what does Team ABA do? How did you get into this field, and then who do you serve? Sure. So, um, interesting, uh, I guess, uh, story with this. Um, so, Team ABA, first and foremost, um, and I love saying this, um, uh, is the world's largest behavior analytics, sport, health, and fitness training organization. Um, and we primarily serve service individuals um, on the sports side from youth to professional athletes, all the way up to professional athletes in various sports like football, basketball, um, volleyball training, direct one-to-one -one or group training there. Um, we also um, have started um, subsidiaries to Team ABA, which are Team ABA Wellness, which uh, we're very happy to announced that we are a Medicaid provider in the Washington, D.C. area, uh, where we're home-based, that, that is home-based, uh, and going into um, other insurance providers as far as MCOs, private insurance, uh, delivering nutrition services, um, wellness services, uh, working with many different professionals, uh, nutritionists, uh, family nurse practitioners, uh, in a multidisciplinary area. And then our last area, um, which is Team ABA University, where we basically teach behavior analysts and non-behavior analysts how to apply behavior analysis, persistent teaching in their practice, whether it be as a health coach, a sports coach, um, or a certified personal trainer. 
Um, but that's Team ABA in a nutshell. Um, but the interesting story of how we got into this field, my wife, um, the better half of, uh, of the Kirby's there, Beverly Kirby is a board certified behavior analyst. And, um, we owned, we co-owned, um, co-started, uh, a ABA agency, a traditional ABA agency in working, uh, providing autism care services in the Washington DC area for nearly, for nearly eight years. Um, uh, we were one of the largest um, providers in the DC metropolitan area. Um, if not, not having that, having that, uh, that agency allowed us to meet Rick um, and forge like a really great uh, working and just friend friendship level uh, relationship there. Um, and um, during that time, you know, uh, because ABA was not my field. Uh, I, you know, I was the one who was just the business mind and trying to expand uh, services that we provided in autism care services. But in in the process, our first three years in, like, I realized that, you know, it, like they keep saying this, like science of human behavior, like, can you know, can really do anything because it's human behavior. And, and I, and I started like look, trying to apply things like, you know, what I, I usually try to apply things that are new. I always use sports analogies to help me understand this. Um, and I was like, well, this is what coaches have been doing because I've been a football coach and a basketball coach for many years at the time. Um, right now, currently I'm going into my 27th year of coaching basketball, um, and equally 27 years of coaching football. Um, and I was like, these are some of kind of the same principles that we've used. And like, how does this like really apply with all getting, you know, separating all this scientific jumbo that I didn't know at the time, like, like this lingering, like, you know, like these, these SAT words that, uh, you know, how can we actually really apply this and started really kind of like, um, delving into some of the research and realize that, hey, you know, this is something that I might be really, truly interested in. So um, back in 2018, um, we sold our company. Um, and instead of listening to my brilliant wife and just say, Kirk, let's just like sit around for two years and not do anything, um, we immediately jumped into starting Team ABA. And uh, it has just been really one heck of a ride, you know, just learning, you know, new things every day. Um, uh, I've been blessed to to practice, you know, behavior analysis, which is now an, an extremely, you know, it's, it's, a, it's my life. Uh, precision teaching is my life. And to, to couple, to pair those two, um, practices and in in doing you know providing services in sports health and fitness well primarily for me sports it's just a dream come true you have uh what as as team aba serves uh this wide audience who are the people that are working like who are the the team aba employees are they all behavior analysts or uh, are they behavior analysts who have been also athletes like what's the mix of the people in Team ABA? So, uh, great question, Rick. So, um, so we are a behavior analytic, precision teaching, sport health and fitness training organization. So we want to obviously have professionals that um, are certified with the great knowledge of behavior analysis, coupled with the fact of having uh, real life experiences in those particular fields. So, you know, we um, have a team of made up of board certified behavior analysts, uh, registered behavior technicians, board certified assistant behavior analysts, and individuals who are seeking uh, certification um, that are uh, basketball, former basketball players uh, on the collegiate level, um, for, uh, uh, USA, USA trained gymnastic coaches. Uh, um, so we look, we look to have a, a, a background of those individuals who are um, ABA professionals coupled with other individuals who are non-ABA professionals that are at the highest level of coaching. 
um, whether it be as a sports trainer, a basketball coach, a health coach, um, uh, a nutritionist. Uh, we, have, we have now coupled those individuals who are um, ABA professionals, sort of board certified behavior analysts, working with those individuals um, that are non ABA professionals and working as a, um, a cohesive group there. We've now expanded and one of the things that I'm really proud about is having a multidisciplinary practice there. So we've brought on um, registered dietitian nutritionists, um, family nurse practitioners to work with clients, um, preventive uh, um, care services, healthcare services, um, we're also bringing in uh, performance coaches, mental perform mental uh, health performance coaches, but utilizing them in, within our system. Because one of the things that you know I always looked at was that we have to play nice uh, in our field there and work with other individuals to look at behavior at its whole. So, so having like, you know, individuals that, again, have the groundwork of, uh, in the scope of practice in behavior analysis, coupled with these individuals they are really outstanding professionals in their chosen field, working together, but providing uh, services through a behavior analytic lens, and more so, a persistent teaching. So do you have a, so just a quick question and I see Rick getting ready to go with another one. Um, are you, is it a train the trainer mm -hmm. model mostly, or is it, are you working with the athletes themselves? Uh, are you teaching them skills to work or is it that you're teaching others to then work or a coach to then work with a team? So there's levels to our services there. So um, we do we provide direct one-to-one -one training within sports, health, and fitness. So to give an example, of what that looks like, um, we have a facility in the in Rockville, Maryland, uh, in the DC metropolitan area, where we do basketball training um, for uh, for our kids, kids and adults as well. Um, so we're providing that one-to-one -one training on skill acquisition, uh, how to cross over someone and uh, effectively shoot jump shots from mid-range and deep. Also, the other sports that we provide, like volleyball, soccer, um, where we do direct training. Same thing with um, uh, in our health and fitness, where we're working with clients um, to increase their um, health performance, their, their healthy lifestyle, um, so we're working directly with them. Trainer trainer model models apply as well in okay. those three areas there. So we will work with on a higher level um, a collegiate program, the Division two uh, football program, uh, Division one basketball programs where we come in, assess some of the performance areas, not just only you know with their athletes because at that, at that uh, stage, you know, it's not too much, too much tree, uh, teaching there. Uh, they're playing Division One basketball. They're pretty good there. So, and they have their staff to, like, you know, to work them out and make sure that they're doing the things properly. We want to increase their performance, increase their ability to perform accurately, fluently, every time, depending, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the environmental contingency or variable is uh, at play there. So we work with uh, those coaches and those person that, that personnel to help them achieve the maximum performance, not only with their players, but within their organization there. So there may be some things that we can analyze from how they operate um, internally. How do they conduct their recruiting methods, how um, how are services being delivered from their key personnel and behaviorally try to make some tweaks here and there. So we will train the trainers and the coaches how to effectively uh, um, improve their performance and then just like teach them how to maintain it and then call us when, if you ever okay. need some help or well, something. That brings us to our first, oh, oh I'm sorry, go ahead.
Go ahead. I was, I was gonna uh, wrap this section yep. up, but it sounded like you were gonna do I that. I was gonna so do that too. Order. So our first secret word is <laughs> sports. Kirk, you you said a lot about your organization, and for the second segment, we want to maybe get some more details here. You said that you blend, you married behavior analysis and precision teaching. What exactly does that look like? How does that manifest when you're working with someone, say, with in basketball? Sure, sure. So, um, so basically, like you know, with precision teaching, uh, uh, it is really the ultimate way to really capture uh, not only just like you know performance data um, in the visual uh, display charts that we use, but the actual effect of coaching um, there. Um, so. What that looks like as far as delivering uh, that coaching model there um, is that we are are doing we're our philosophy is that we don't want our coaches to change how they coach, especially like individual our coaches who 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 um, have don't have an ABA or precision teaching background. But we implement some of uh, methodology and 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 procedures. It, within a training session. So for example, with basketball, um, our basketball training session, whether it be a one-to-one -one training session or a group training session, we are showing them, depending on the skill level, you know, new skill acquisition. So, you know, adding on to building on, on something that's established and then adding on to it. Um, so we're actually shaping, you know, new behaviors there, giving immediate feedback um, in the performance there uh, and and really utilizing some of the principles that we all know in behavior analysis, whether it be uh, um, video video feedback, um, clicker training to uh, enhance shooting form. In that, per, that first 15 to 20 minute session um, of an hour long session, we're providing that. Then we have a section where we're taking performance data, okay? So a lot of this, and especially with basketball and with a group session, you know, um, the idea is to get them to be, be better shooters because there are guys out in the NBA that make millions of dollars that can just do one one thing, and that's shoot, okay? And you may be that, that type of player that you might not be the quickest guy, the tallest guy, but you can if you can shoot, you can get to the, uh, at a high level. You can you can play professional basketball. So we'll take uh, performance data from uh, utilizing frequency. So in a, a frequency model shooting, we may have our our kids just going through a repetition of five five areas of the court where they need to shoot. And we're actually timing them, how fast they can get their shots off, how accurate they're getting their shots off, and taking both that performance data within precision teaching there. So we'll, we'll have them do their particular drill, give them immediate feedback, have them do a drill again, focusing on one particular area that we may want to see that uh, we want to improve, and then seeing, seeing those results there. And after we have that particular um, data, we capture that data, we're immediately charting this. So we're actually doing this in session. So we may have, you know, someone that is uh, observing, uh, doing the counts uh, that we're looking at and, and, and supplying our charting right then and there while a coach is providing immediate feedback to our players there. And then finally, you know, we want to test it out uh, whatever skill that we're working on or whatever, whatever pinpoint target behavior that we want to increase or decrease, we'll, uh, we'll do it uh, in simulation, trying to generalize some of the behaviors that we have worked on in our session there. Um, it's just, again, precision teaching uh, in performance-based training just goes hand in hand. It's just really natural. Um, but just in a nutshell, that's just giving you kind of like an insight of what 
you know, how our training goes within a particular sport. So do you, when you use the clicker train, when you use the frequency training, do you then immediately follow it up with, do you ever interrupt so that you can work on the topography of shooting? For example, if someone's not shooting, they're, they're shooting, they're making it maybe, but they're not using the correct form. So you can, you, this provides you that level of, of data and information that you can change the form, you can change how fast you can change. So it seems like you're, you're covering all your bases as you're working through these skills, just like you would with an academic skill, you, you're doing it with these sports skills. Yeah, the, so the immediacy of, of identifying something like whether it be like, you know, uh, a wrinkle in their form and being able to coach that up within a session and utilizing um, uh, uh, data to see, you know, their performance is so key. So just to kind of give an example to kind of elaborate that on uh, that point, Doug, that we may see in consecutive rounds of shooting um, uh, that literally like, you know, like uh, the form is off. Uh, it's not consistent. Um, and especially if we worked on it prior to, you know, our section of, uh, of, of uh, performance data section that we have in our training there. Um, we can just kind of change the whole uh, typography and change what we're going to focus on. So we may be looking at just like overall, our pinpoint is made shots in, a, in a one minute. But for this particular player right here, let's kind of go uh, dial it back a little bit. I need to get your your um, your guide hand up a little bit higher and not affecting the follow through. So now my pinpoint changes, uh, and I'm not just looking at that from just like using the litmus test. I can see it, I can observe it, but then if I'm looking at the uh, the trends of the data that we've collected and making those decisions, data-driven decisions there, I can now change up the training right then and there. Um, I may have a coach, one of my assistant coaches continue on, if we have a group um, uh, going, continue on with the probing on performance shooting, and then I may take this player right here, and let's go uh, work on a new pinpoint there. Um, and and really start to get them fluent so I can throw them back into that segment of practice and see the results there. So yes, absolutely. Um, just utilizing some of those methods there is just out, uh, really helps us be a better coach in delivering you know our coaching methods to our players there. Kirk, you have had, uh, and you continually expand, you're bringing more people on. Uh, how, it, how is it that you get people up to speed with your unique way of doing business and getting your, uh, I mean, your own staff right. up to snuff on all the different innovations that you've made? Yeah, um, it's, it's, Rather difficult at times um, because, you know, we have a staff that is remote based. So we have our home um, gym here in the D.C. metropolitan area, but we employ individuals all over the country. They're actually all over the world because we do have individuals that work uh, work for the organization in Canada. Um, so it's a lot of you know, communication there, like, you know, like a communication and kind of training that we do with our staff there of new innovations that we find within practice. Every day, I like to say, every day that um, I step into that gym, I learn five different new things. Um, because that's the beautiful thing about, you know, this field, like uh, sport health and fitness um, is obviously a new field. And um, there's not too many people, individuals out here that are actually applying, you know, some of the research that is out there within um, behavior analysis. I get to say that for the last like four years, I've been doing this virtually almost every day, even through COVID doing it uh, through telehealth there or telesports there. Um, so conveying that, that message that like, you know, um, making sure that 
our 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 trainers and our coaches and our staff are are up to up to speed on some of the new things that we've learned some of the uh resources out there is critical and that's where we you know have a lot of help from our team maybe a university staff to kind of like take that responsibility and help our um coaches and our trainers um be again up to snuff with some of the new innovations that we have discovered in our field okay well that brings us to our next secret word, which is fluency. Kirk, one final question for this final section. If you can share, what are some of the extraordinary successes you've had with implementing this approach? Things that you can share. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, one of the things that we are extremely proud of is that we um, we work with a uh, AAU basketball team that we partner up with um, our lead basketball coach, uh, um, Mike Askew, who uh, is a Virginia State University Hall of Famer, played uh, played overseas, um, various countries overseas. Um, he has a basketball team uh, called Team Askew. And some of the kids that we've um, worked with in the past year, um, new to basketball, uh, you know, they, they enjoyed basketball and were, you know, like we we're working with kids at that time, they were like 13, 12 years old, um, never played on a higher level basketball there. Um, so, you know, we got a chance to work with some of these kids um, uh, and teaching them skill sets and all. And uh, now they're at the age of where they are going to high school. And 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 from like the from the data that we've collected in the past, like basically year year and a half, uh, some of the the data, some of the 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 acceleration points. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. And, and sometimes like, you know, you, you kind of like, you know, like you always ask yourself, like, am I doing, you know, the best for my clients, for the people who entrust us to train, you know, their, their young athletes and all. And then, you know, I always fall back on like, you know, the data there, like, you know, just to look at from where they started. Um, and again, the litmus test, you can see, like, you know, we can bring in, you know, coaches and par parents and all who've seen these kids at from the very beginning, and and then now look at how they've grown and their understanding, their their understanding and awareness of the game. But when I show the data, um, if they're not like, okay, I don't understand these X's and dots and, and and all these things, but when you kind of break it down to them, they're like, that is amazing. It look that this visual display. Uh, reflects what I see, you know, out there. So, you know, I'd look to to that. I mean, we've had the opportunity to consult with talking with uh, professional basketball teams, uh, Division One through NIAA teams, consulting with them, doing trainer to trainer uh, modeling with them. But if I had to go choose choose one thing that I'm really, really proud of is working with these kids um, at Team Askew and just the leaps and bounds of 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 how they've gotten better there. So I'm really proud. Will of these kids get so I'm not familiar with the model. Will these kids get to play together in high school and or are they from of like a larger area so that they'll be contributing to different high schools? So we have um, we have a pocket of so we have like fifteen kids within um, that age mm -hmm. group program, and some of them go to the same high school. Will be trying out for their their respective teams there, um, but they get to play you know together within their travel basketball team, which starts you know spring summer after the high school. Um, season is over there. So they're really excited. They're, they're, you know, they're in grind mode right now. Like, you know, because they have a month of, uh, away till tryouts. They're super excited. They're learning uh, stuff every day. Like they are gym rats. They are in our gym every day working hard. Um, 
So, so they will be playing, you know, for their respective teams, uh, prayerfully that they make their, uh, their high school rosters. And then they'll be coming back to us in the spring to Team Askew um, to play for their And these their techniques travel. that you're using, these kids, did they buy in early or did they just buy in over time because they felt the successes that you're talking about? So it's it's... I want to say that uh, you know some of them just bought in early because um, because it was an, it's right. it's something new like you know they've been to other training places where they're you know and and all of like you know we're lucky to have in an area that has great training basketball training there um, but not so like you know right. nothing like this where it, it's evidence based and and it's delivered in a non stressful. Uh, reinforcing manner. So some of them bought into it immediately. Some of them were like, well, like, let's see, you know, and we've had to kind of do some behavioral shaping awesome. with them as well. But um, so like, you know, we, we, we try to stick into that one lane where, you know, okay, I'm the coach, I'm coaching you basketball. And if we start to identify some 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 things that we want to um, to to change as far as behaviorally to eliminate some of you know behaviors that are not going to be uh, conducive to their success. Then, like you know, our our behavior scientists uh, put on their behavior scientist hats and do some do some intervention there. So so it's kind of like a mix of buy in from immediate immediate buy in to well, let's see how this goes to. My goodness, uh, yeah, like I feel like I've gotten better, and this data tells me that I'm. That's the important better. thing. I don't think kids, and I'm I'm stealing this one. Uh, I, I don't think kids realize when they get that feedback. Coaches get feedback on kids' performance and then convey that. But when kids can see their own feedback, just like in academic settings, that is that's the buy-in right there. So, Rick, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I saw you going there. Oh, it's great. Uh, I, I'm so excited at what you're doing. You, know, you look at ABA and its promise and just the fact, you know, hearing your stories it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, you know, you're doing, I've read a lot about different uh, sports psychologists and there's, dominant model in many sports where these sports psychologists are on the mental side. They're like, well, if we, you know, we can get people in the right mindset and, uh, you know, let's work on anxiety. Whereas ABA is about working on a skill directly and looking at how do we shape that skill up? And if there's a skill that's up here, how do we, uh, you know, move it out of the repertoire? Now, there's, we just do that all the time. That's that's part and parcel of the science. So the fact that you're doing this at scale with sports is just fascinating. I'd like to hear uh, maybe some other insights of like what has surprised you, you know, outside of basketball. Like, are you doing gymnastics or soccer or football? You know, have you learned anything from uh, the, the sports that the team ABA is also working on? Absolutely, absolutely. And I kind of want to piggyback a little bit on um, your point, Rick, on sports uh, psychology being the prevailing method uh, within um, working with athletes. And I'll get to that, but I'll, let me answer my question, uh, your question there really quickly. Um, yeah, I've learned a whole lot. I, you know, just like, you know, some of the sports that we service, uh, volleyball, um, I never played volleyball. I don't think, I might, I might have played, you know, maybe in gym class, maybe in, uh, as a freshman in high school or so. Um, um, but in applying, you know, uh, our, our, like, you know, like our, our service model, our methods um, within behavior analysis and, and precision teaching, uh, it, you know, it comes down to just like, you know, like, Literally, like, if you're not, if you're not so much familiar with the sport, you know, but you're familiar on how to increase motivation, how to, how to uh, increase acquisition of that particular skill, you know, it kind of starts to like, you know, start to, 
like ease into, they kind of all like almost mirror themselves. And especially like, you know, when doing research in, in a sport that like maybe I might be doing some uh, internal observation and, and supervision right there that I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from, from just like positioning in volleyball and, 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 and different levels of soccer, things of that nature and how to work some of them. I've actually even done a session in volleyball to, to cover for one of our trainers for about 10 minutes. And although it was just warming up, it was like, hey, I like, you know, I, I kind of might have a future in this thing here. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, we've learned a lot. But one of the things I kind of really want to touch on really quickly is that, you know, I happen to be in a, in a sports psychology uh, doctorate program now. And I'm learning a whole lot from that end. Um, one of the things that I always advocate is obviously working with different disciplines to provide, like, you know, especially with mentalists uh, that, that, again, the prevailing professionals within the sports arena um, to look at behavior overall, not just to look at it cognitively, um, not just to only look at it like, you know, just how the, the the environment affects behavior, but to kind of like, you know, work together. And one of the things that um, I've learned from this uh, is that, you know, cookie cutter approaches that may be, you know, prevailing in sports psychology that, okay, let's look at it from a mindset perspective. And my treatment, my coaching to you, it will be, I just need you to settle your mind here and there. I need you to focus on some of these things. Well, unfortunately, that's not going to affect, like, you know, when you have change of environment and, and some of these things that can actively affect your performance right then and there. Um, and it's really, really has reinforced that, you know, there has to be a marriage between behavior analysis, sports behavior analysis, and sports psychology. And not just only in developing the, the actual behavior performance of an athlete, but also re reinforcing skill acquisition and applying it in every type of instance that you'll see in athletics there. So yeah, that's well, that's kind of like, you know, the 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 thing like the aha moment for me that like you know that we have a place in this field here um i just hope that more and more coaches and athletic directors and owners of uh professional teams hear my my cry all right well i'm gonna ask a quick question and then we're gonna get to our last word but when you add in lacrosse Oh man, so so really I there's there's and I hope she's listening. Uh there is a uh a BCBA in our area that uh coaches lacrosse and she's actually taken okay. some of our uh one of our courses there. Um I am really looking forward to adding lacrosse to okay. our well, repertoire. Okay. Then that's great cuz that's what my son plays. So mm -hmm. <laughs> So, all right, all well, right. And our final word then is success. So, and that's there a good go. word because, Kirk, obviously you've been very successful. And I want to thank you for your time this day. I mean, it has just been wonderful hearing about all the things that you're doing with your organization. Well, I want to thank you guys because you guys have been in the background helping us there. Rick, um, you know, I, you know how I feel about you, man. You're, you know, my mentor. You're the guy that I learned from, man. And uh, Team ABA wouldn't be here without, without you. And Doug, you got, you have been, been a great service to us. And thank you for allowing me Very this platform. Very kind of you to say. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank all of you listeners for checking us out today. We appreciate all of the likes that you give us on your various downloads. We also appreciate it when you share the word with everyone else. Doug and I are very passionate and very happy that we can help get the word 
of ABA out there and continue to have great guests like Kirk and just explore all the different facets of this wonderful science. So on behalf of Doug and Kirk, I thank you all for joining us on ABA On Call. Thanks for watching this episode of ABA On Call. To get your CEU, follow the link and instructions below the video. You can enjoy the program again there, or you can go straight to the attendance verification quiz. Just enter the secret words and pay the CEU fee to generate your certificate.